Well, it's a twist on Shakespeare's classic A Midsummer Night's Dream. The play is at the Broad Stage in Santa Monica, and they're bringing in some new props. They're actually adding puppets. This is really cool. Actors David Ricardo Pierce and Miltos Yorolomu are here, and they're going to talk to us about this new twist on this show. And you actually brought some puppets to show us, David. I did indeed. Yeah, well... So the uh, show we're doing is with Handspring Puppet Company, who created War Horse, the, uh, the sort of Broadway uh, West End show. that. that oh, uses. and the horse was just amazing. Yeah, so they've basically created these um, beautiful, lifelike horses. So when you watch War Horse, you, you think you're watching real right, horses. Right, your eyes uh, trick you, right? Exactly. So what they've done in our production is they've sort of deconstructed their, their craft and they've made sort of... Uh, suggestions of puppets and and so basically what what I have as Oberon is this enormous hand here and this enormous head right so so when Oberon comes to life for most of the time he's represented by me and these puppets so and this I mean this hand is kind of extraordinary it can it sort of opens up and it can point at things and and that's sort of the same the sound look. that you hear in War Horse when you're watching that production yeah. and, the, and the actors kind of fade yeah. away exactly yeah so so the idea really is that, that you know, you're watching this puppet and you're sort of, you're, you sort of sketch in the rest of his body. Right. Um, and so in a way, it's, it's sort of a more of an immersive, imaginative experience for the audience because you really have to, you know, connect with the, the audience and the audience have to connect with you. And it's sort of, it, you know, it sort of demands this crazy like imaginative sharing. Yeah, yeah. And Miltos, have you, do you have a puppet in the show? I do have a puppet. And right. have you guys worked with puppets before? <laughs> Mm, not, not a lot, really. actually. No, no, no. I mean, it, the, my puppet experience has been very limited, but we all went on a bit of a steep learning curve this, for uh, rehearsing this show. It must have been a real challenge. You have to learn Shakespeare and the, and the cadence and the rhythm of that delivery. Exactly, exactly. You have to learn your lines, the music, yeah. and, and then you have yeah. to learn how to work with and puppets. And we're all on stage for yeah. two and a half hours. Uh, you know, we're all on stage, and we, when we're not being our principal characters, we're being a kind of Greek chorus of... Uh, of, of puppeteers with planks as mm. well. So these, this is almost like the set comes to life as well. Yeah, so the puppet, you know, because obviously there's, there's puppets like this, this chap who they're sort of fairly beautifully carved and there's some very beautiful fairy puppets that the handspring guys have made. But then there's also everything on the set. The set's made of planks of wood and they come to life. There's Puck is, is a deconstructed Bunraku puppet, which is like a three-man puppet, mm. just made out of household tools and blow mm -hmm. torches and saws and things. And it keeps transforming and it keeps all the time. keeps changing shape. And so it's really like, it's the, the idea that Tom and the guys had when they created the show was that everything has, a, has the potential of life. So um, yeah, so we had like a week and a half of puppet training, didn't we? <laughs> by Basil and Adrian, who run Handspring, just before we started rehearsals, just so we had some idea of how to, to breathe life into these things. So. And, 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 and you're still in rehearsals there. right now? No, 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 we're in performance. You're in performance, and how is the audience reacting? I, I, it okay, must be so very whimsical and fun to watch. They, yeah, it's they love it. It's a funny I mean, show. So we're on a world tour at the moment, so actually we haven't opened in LA yet. We right. open on Thursday, Thursday. Thursday night. But the uh, audiences in DC at the Kennedy Center were amazing. We played Boston, we played Hong Kong, we played London, so they, yeah, they, they, I mean, it's a really fun show and I think it's also that, pretty yeah. original. I mean, Midsummer Night's Dream is done quite a lot. Right. Mm. It's a very popular and uh, some, Shakespeare play. Sometimes Shakespeare seems a little bit off putting to bring children to, but this seems like it would be fun for the kids as well. Yeah, I think so. I think it's gone down very well as a, across the board with, with audiences in the sense that that it I think it makes you look at the play in a brand new light as well because you yeah. see things in a way that you haven't really seen in Midsummer Night's Dream. Exactly. And, you know, Miltos plays Bottom um, and transforms no, into a donkey. And, and, in a kind with of an interesting twist, right? Way, <laughs> which yeah. we can't Bottom. give away. You can't give away. But, but it's, you know, it's our but, secret. But the sort of, I think something about our production is because it's a play about magic, isn't it? And about dreaming. And transformation. And, and you know, we invite the audience to sort of go on that dream with us. Uh, we, and, it's, and because we have these extraordinary puppets to play with, uh, the, it's the sort of potential for magic is really alive, isn't it, in our production? It yeah. sounds like so Which much fun. So much, so hard uh, often. In, in hard for you create. guys, but I'm sure the audiences love it. Miltos oh, yeah. and David, thank you so much yeah. for being here. Pleasure. Pleasure. All right, you can catch the show at the Broad Stage. It runs this Thursday. That's opening night through April 18th. For more information about a Midsummer Night's Dream in Santa Monica, just check out kcal9.com. You can click Seen on TV.